easy to like sh it's gonna relax. So we don't stand on the rock down there. Welcome sailing fans. This is the theater style finals of the 2014 Palma World Cup of Sailing. And we come to you here from beautiful Palma de Mallorca, Club Nautico Arenal, on the uh, southern shore of the Bay of Palma. And we've got a lovely day for you. The uh, sun is shining, the wind is cooperating so far, and we've got uh, 10 of the best skiff sailors in the world coming to race immediately here in the 49er FX fleet. We do have 20 minutes to go to the start, so uh, we, I'm not going to talk and try and preview the whole thing, so just set your clock for about 11.20 local time here. It's just past 11, and we'll come back to you and set the whole thing up. In the meantime, I'll put up the scoreboard, and uh, you can jot that down uh, on a piece of paper in front of you and keep track of the scores at home, because uh, we won't be able to do it so quickly where we are, but uh, should be a great day racing, and we uh, thank you for tuning in.
Hi there sailing fans, welcome to the 2014 Palma World Cup of Sailing finals for the 49er FX class. We've got about five and a half minutes to go. There's the five minute flag right there, so five minutes exactly. And uh, you're in for a treat today. We've got a light breeze, five to seven knots. Ten of the best female skiff sailors in the world doing battle for the title. And uh, everything looks like it's running smoothly. You can see the breeze is in from uh, the north right now, which is the same direction we had yesterday, although we're under bright sunny skies, which is a nice change. There is still a leftover swell uh, coming left to right on your screen, uh, so it'll be affecting the girls a little bit uh, differently on one tack than the other. I'm Ben Remerker, the CEO of the 49er class, and we're proud to present to you this very simple broadcast of the racing today. We just have the one uh, shore camera, but we hope to be able to convey the uh, championship to you in, uh, in live time, and I hope you enjoy watching it at home. If you want to ask us questions, we'll be checking our Twitter, at INT49ER, INT49ER, at INT49ER. So please ask us any questions, and we'll do our best to get you the answers. So that was the four-minute flag that just went. Four minutes to go. Um, for those of you who were tuned in a few minutes ago, you can check out the scoreboard, but I'll run through it now. Uh, I'm also a former crew, so it pains me to say I'm going to do my best to refer to the boats by only their country or skipper name. So we'll do that now. It's Brazil, Grail on 45 points. Denmark, Nielsen on 49 points. G Britain, Dobson on 77 points. Netherlands, Beckering on 85 points. Germany, Lutz on 88 points. Spain, Echegoyen on 91 points. Denmark, Hansen on 91 points. France, Steart on 97 points. Germany, Jursok on 97 points. And Sweden, Klinge on 109 points. That's the top 10 standings. Uh, probably the, what we'll focus on initially is the battle for first and second, which is between Martin Grail Brazil and Nielsen from Denmark. There are two Danish boats here. Nielsen is uh, right, hopefully, center of screen in the Denmark 11 boat, which uh, is actually reflecting in the sun right now, but uh, hopefully we got it. Should be okay there. And uh, the two of them are only four points apart. We've got three races for you coming up, three 10-minute races. On the sidelines, there are boundaries, so the girls are not able to go too far into the corners, although it's quite wide today. Our race officer, Luki, has been with us for years, and he's done a great job, as always, getting our course set up. Just a couple minutes to go to the start here, and we can see the boats are piling up at the boat end. So we've seen over the last two minutes, 30 to go. We've seen over the last uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, the boat, the wind has gone to the right and uh, the girls are oh now they're spreading out across the line so they all went and had a look maybe checking out a transit and now we can see a pretty even spread across the line with the two Danes <laughs> we've got a few spectators out so uh, excuse our vantage point but uh, it'll clear up momentarily we still have uh, two minutes to go to the start so plenty of time here the next signal we'll see is the blue and white flag on uh, the committee boat go down. That'll signify one minute, and then it'll be go. So, our uh, battle for first here is uh, not engaging at the minute. The, the two are just trying to sail their own races. We can tell because Nielsen, Denmark 11, is the second boat in at the start line. Meanwhile, Sam, if you can pan all the way over to the other side of the start line, you can see, that was the one minute flag, by the way, you can see Grail, uh, Brazil 12, she's aiming for a port tack start. So the two of them will, if they get off the lines cleanly, will be uh, splitting tacks to start the race. The other team trying for a port tack start is Sweden, and the remaining eight teams all look like they're trying to the traditional starboard start. Just coming through the picture now is Germany 6, Jursok. Yersok is down in ninth place, tied on points with uh, Steart, the French woman, who came third at the uh, World Championships last year. Just getting right down to the start now. We've got uh, 
under 30 seconds to go. Quite a lot of intensity at the line. We see uh, Nielsen and o Nielsen, Denmark 11, just sheeting in. They're all sheeting in to go, and that's the signal. They're off. Just a signal, signal. So I, that's a clean start for everyone. Both Nielsen and Grail have got off the line cleanly as Grail goes through our screen to the right, and Nielsen is holding her lane on starboard going to the left. Initially, I'd say that uh, Grail might have an advantage here. The right side of the course is quite wide. She'll have a lot, be able to do a lot of sailing. Oh, both the Danes tack. So there won't be quite as much separation. It didn't look like Nielsen got quite the start she wanted, and she's had to tack and duck Yersok, Germany, who, is, uh, who came off the pin ahead of her. And she's now chasing off to the right to uh, go the same direction as the Brazilians. We can see this is the tack that has the swell underneath it. So the girls are having to deal with very changing speeds as they ride the waves down. You can see Grail right there surfing waves. She's at full plane right now. They're almost double trapping. And then as they get off the plane, they have to suck inside the boat as the pressure decreases. Very difficult sailing as she approaches the boundary and goes for her first tack. She'll be on starboard once she tacks, so she'll have right away. And we see the Swedes on her hip tack at the same time. Not the biggest lane for Grail. Um, she, she should be able to survive there, but uh, she'll have to sail well to keep her pressure. The Swedes are just not handling it quite as well. We see Jena, Denmark 136, duck, but Ida Nielsen, Denmark 11, tacks underneath. And she looks like she's ahead of the Swedes to me. Um, Martine Grail, though, could be on Leyline for the mark. So, no, probably not with her, with, but uh, this is going to be a difficult uh, setup here for Nielsen. She's going to have to pinch off Klinga, make attack, and then avoid uh, Grail when she comes back. Meanwhile, the French, Stayart, has crossed both boats. And let's see if she's able to, and she crosses Brazil as well. So the leaders are coming from the left. The next boat that's trying to cross is Germany 6, that's Yersok, and she she crosses cleanly as well. And then we haven't talked about Dobson yet, GBR 22. She's now in the middle of the screen. It looks like Dobson and looks like Dobson and Yersok are the two leaders right now. Dobson from GBR 22, Yersok Germany 6. They both have one tack left to go to get to this mark. Yeah, Yersok has cleared. Jenna Hansen from Denmark 136. So it's either Dobson or Yersok in the lead of this first race. Stayart's also quite wide on the ley line, but I think Yersok, where she tacked, that should be ley line. So I think it's going to be Yersok who uh, got the best start at the boat end. Just a single tack. Oh, that's Dobson just lee bowing Yersok. If, oh, and the Spanish have come in ahead as well. So the left side is really paid. We've now got three boats all stacked up, trying to make the windward mark here on starboard. And it looks like the Spaniards. That is Echegoyen. First trip to the medal race, and they're going to be around the first mark first as they surge ahead, uh, able to pinch out both the Brits and the Germans. Yeah, that's the Spanish round first. Good for them. Dobson in second. Yersok in third. As I mentioned at the start of the broadcast, these races are only 10 minutes long, two laps. So we'll expect the action to be fast and furious. That is Lutz, round in fourth place. Quite slowly, she jibes set to clear her air. And let's see, yeah, she has a decent jibe set. The spinnaker's filling. Stare, round in fourth. Fifth, rather. And that's Grail in sixth, followed by Nielsen in seventh. So not a lot of separation so far between Grail and Nielsen in our battle for the lead. In our battle for the bronze, Dobson is looking to uh, lay a marker down here with a top finish, and uh, that should help her with her already eight-point lead over the, over the fourth-place boat, who's the Netherlands. Okay, meanwhile, on the far left of the screen, we'll go see Echegoyen go for her jibe. She's gone almost all the way to the boundary. Goes for a nice, clean jibe, and she should be on ley line for these lured marks. So as long as the breeze holds for her, should be quite a clean route. I am looking to the far side of the course where we saw Lutz uh, jibe set. She looks to me like she's in pressure and she's just going for her jibe now. So it looks to me like a little bit of pressure on the right side of the course, the opposite side that our leaders came from. But I don't think it'll be enough for them to leapfrog, but it definitely could be enough to put some pressure on. Dobson in the blue spinnaker. 
just gone for her drive. She's still ahead of Lutz. So uh, things are, are staying quite stable with the lead on this first downwind. Uh, Dobson and Jersok coming together. Jersok in the black spinnaker with the SAP logo. Jibes right on Dobson's line. Doesn't give her any room. And meanwhile, in the white spinnaker, we can see Etchegoyen sinking low so that she doesn't have to do any more jibes as she comes into the lead of this first lured mark. Beautifully sailed, very simple for her, for Etchegoyen. She uh, made it to the mark, straight set, one jibe, soaked a little bit to get to the mark. Your stock, though, Germany 6, is a speedster, and uh, she's now splitting tacks with Etchegoyen and will have clean air almost the entire way. So looking good for them. Uh, Dobson just coming in very slowly to the lured mark. Tina Lutz. No, she's going to have to go above. Dobson's in round in third. Stayart in fourth. So uh, split tack so far. The, the team's going to the right early are having to deal with some uh, wind shadows of the boats coming downwind. We now see Nielsen in the uh, Lindbergh spinnaker going the same direction as Grail. Grail just went around the go left mark and now Nielsen goes the same way. She's got good speed. It's very tempting to try an extra maneuver to, to shave a few meters off the distance, but speed is speed and flow around these lured marks is a very good weapon to have. And that was a very good rounding from Nielsen, a very mature play there as she follows Grail to the left side of the course. Why don't we pan around to our leader here, Sam. Uh, she'll be going for her tack soon on the uh, far right of the course. We can see that there she goes for attack right now. So she's all the way to the boundary. She tacked a little bit early, either because she's on the ley line or because she felt that she didn't want to give quite as much of a gap between her and the girls going left. Stayart continues to go to the right. Stayart's our uh, 2013 bronze medalist, burst onto the scene. Uh, that was her first serious regatta of her campaign after. Uh, being becoming a school teacher for about a year and then uh, decided she hadn't uh, lost the itch to go sailing and she sailed very consistently winning the North Americans and Miami Olympic classes. Had a bit of trouble this week especially in the breezier conditions midweek. We saw her sitting outside of the places of the medal of the to get into the finals for most of the week but in the final day she had another a couple good races like we've uh, seen so often from her and has come in in eighth place on 97 points. Uh, with the ability to move up quite easily into the uh, fourth or so range, uh, things that have to go quite well for her. Meanwhile, middle of the course, we see the Spanish not putting a step wrong. Uh, sailing across, they've, managed, they're, they've easily covered Yersok, who didn't seem to have a ton of pressure on the left side. Go for their tack. They've got two more tacks to go to the mark. There's going to be a cross coming up here uh, between the Germans and the French. Germans did round in second at the Leward Gate, but it looks to me like the French might have them here, it's, or it'll certainly be close. No, the Germans are going to cross, so there's still a couple boat lengths ahead, but it's very close. This final downwind might have something in it. Sarah Stayart of France will be looking. Oh, she's gone for her tack now, so she wasn't on ley line. Two more tacks. That'll give Yersok a nice little bit of breathing room. And we'll see now what the uh, situation is between Dobson and Stayart, as the two of them should be reasonably close to each other. Dobson, GBR 22, coming across on port, and uh, Stayart's back on starboard, and Dobson goes for the duck. So Stayart's gained a place on this uh, second beat, and Dobson, Dobson's dropped back a little bit. She was uh, in a, quite a comfortable third of that first beat, and now Ooh, just a bit of a slow tack there. And Grail's back in the mix. She had to duck uh, the French and now ducks the British. Doing well there. She had a good, very good tack. So Grail's caught up a lot of distance and she'll be in an attacking mood on this downwind. We've seen her sail very well through the year. Okay, so the girls are jibe setting the leaders. We've got the white spinnaker of Echegoyen in the lead, just outside her ear sock. Maybe I'll just list off. So Grail is round in fifth. Must be a right wind shift as all the girls are jibe setting. Let's see what Grail does. No, Grail straight sets. So Grail doesn't follow the trend. She's going for separation. She must be in an attacking mood. 
Immediately behind her is Nielsen. They're the two in the battle for the lead, and Nielsen does go for the jibe set. So it could be a, could be a points changer on this downwind. Nielsen in the black spinnaker with the Lindbergh logo, goes for the jibe set, and uh, separates from Grail as much as possible. We'll just pan back to our leaders. We've got Chagoyan in the white spinnaker. She'll be coming up on the ley line for the final jibe to the finish. Two lap race. And there she goes for her jibe. Very clean. Good solid boat handling. Um, the Spanish duo spent their winter in Santander and then went to Miami and have now come here to Palma for a month and a half. I asked them if they thought it was the local conditions that have helped them out so much this week and they said that it was just that it was the conditions were so good they were able to train almost every day and get lots of hours in the boat which is what they needed so they're uh, they're bursting on the scene the crew is a gold medalist from the Engl from the match racing in London and uh, we saw them placing in the mid-teens for the most of 2013 but they've clearly announced uh, that they're one of the teams to be reckoned with here in 2014 just one more jive to go to the finish we saw your sock catch some meters downwind. She's typically quite fast in the light winds. And, uh, but the Spanish are very close to the line here. A smooth jive and there should be no issues. Jersok does have a higher line there. I'm surprised the Spanish waited so long to make their jive, but in the end it's no problem. They're through with the win and Jersok in second. The breeze has just picked up a little bit here. We've got a puff in. That's going to be stay arc through into fourth, third. Dobson, solid race into fourth. And now we see uh, the blue spinnaker, I believe, is Grail. So she's uh, kept her fifth and she's actually got a boat in between. Uh, herself and Nielsen, well, it's, not, it's not over yet. The, we see Nielsen coming in with a lot of speed, looking to go over top of, of Lutz, Germany 161. I think Lutz has got her spinnaker filling, and that's the Brazilians through the line, and the Germans surge to the line as well, with the Swedes coming in after Nielsen. So a very tight finish from uh, fifth through seventh. But that's a couple extra points to Grail. And then, uh, then we've got Beckering in, through in ninth, and uh, Jana Hansen struggled right from the start, back in tenth position here. Whew, that was a pretty intense race. Nail biting for the end. The Spanish have caught up. I'm going to put the microphone down, do a quick bit of math for you, and be back with you shortly. Um, we see all the coaches just circling in to talk to their sailors, and we'll be back. The next race uh, should only be about seven minutes away. They're going to try and rattle them off as quickly as possible. So if you need to grab a snack, do that, and we'll be back with you shortly.
and pan up to these two Danish. Hey, uh, we're back here. The wind has turned uh, close to 90 degrees and uh, starting to fill in. You can see uh, if you pan left, Sam, you'll see a couple of the Danes uh, leaving their coach boat and heading to the starting area. And then if you pan back to the race committee, you'll see him dropping his anchor to uh, get ready to start proceedings again. Should be, at my guess, 10 to 15 minutes until we get a nice uh, sea breeze in here and, and restart the competition.
So back now to the 2014 Palma Regatta theater style finals for the 49er FX. This is upcoming, will be race two of three. For those of you who are watching the screen, you'll have seen the red flag go up. Typically, that means 10 minutes to go. Uh, the signal from our race officer, it could be six if he's uh, in a hurry. So uh, we could see another fl flag in a minute, but most likely that's a 10 minute. Um, the breeze has come in nicely here. The sea breeze is in. It's at, uh, yeah, it's light right now, probably no more than five or six knots, but we expect it to build uh, given it's still early in the day and the land heat's been nice. We'll sign off for a minute. I'll put up the scores. You guys can notch those scores down on a scratch pad in front of you while you're watching. And, uh, and then we'll tune back in with five minutes to go.
Okay, sailing fans, five minutes to go here till the second race of the 49er FX Theater Style Finals. We saw that white flag go up at exactly five minutes, and the teams will be getting into their pre-start routines. We have uh, 10 of the best 49er FX teams in the world here, about to do their second race in this uh, regatta. In the lead, I'll just actually put the uh, scoreboard up for you right now. Teams are starting to uh, execute on their strategies at this point. They'll probably have chosen whether they prefer to start on starboard or port. In the first race of the day, in the light winds, we saw two of them start on port and the uh, eight start on the traditional manner on starboard. How's that image, uh, Sam, with the, uh, with the Icarus guys in their balloon right in front of us? Hopefully it's not too bad and you can see through some of the officials and some of the media boats. We should have a good angle for the race, though. Uh, what do we have happening here? So we've got uh, the Spanish setting up for a boat end start. The breeze is filled in nicely. It's up to probably seven knots now. And uh, the, the breeze is now pretty much aligned with the swell. So uh, the teams will be facing relatively e even conditions on both tacks, unlike what we saw in the first race. Looks like Lutz is uh, setting up uh, for a boat end start as well. Just trying to pick out our leaders. So uh, there's the, unfortunately, we've got uh, 49er alum Alan Norgard with his uh, NACRA. He's come to watch the races and he's unfortunately on camera side of the course. So maybe we can shout out him to move to the other side of the course later, but he's blocking our view right now. But uh, Martin Grail. Brazil 12, middle of, uh, middle of the pack. She is looking, looks to me like she's trying for a starboard start. Meanwhile, to the far right of screen possibly, or maybe outside of screen is Ida Nielsen, Denmark 11 in second place. Looks to me like she's gonna try a port start. So uh, we'll get a split again right off the start from those two. No engagement from the two in terms of match racing. We're under a minute to go. Teams just making their final approaches. Sarah Stayart from France, and also uh, looks to me like Annemiek Beckering, both also going for a late uh, port approach. Both of them are gonna be underneath Nielsen, so Nielsen's gonna have to be patient here to get her start right. Uh, actually, this isn't Norgard blocking our view. This is his old crew. Uh, these are two 49er sailors, Lynn and uh, Anders blocking our view. So hopefully uh, we can shout at them. To, there we go, now it's clear. Okay, just coming up to the start, we see Nielsen making a run. She's going below uh, below France. They're both fighting to be the first boat through onto starboard. That's a start. I don't see I don't see any flags. So clean start. We've got uh, Beckering off the pin. Good start from her. We've got Grail just uh, one up. Good start from her. Then we've got Klinga from Sweden. 
Nielsen's made it through as well. She's got a lane on port, so clean sailing so far. Hansen from Denmark, farthest to the right, is in trouble. She'll have to tack early. There she goes. And then all the boats will ask for room to tack. There goes Beckering. Protest there from Grail as uh, Klinga did not give her any room to tack. We'll see what the umpires say. They were right there. That's a tough break for Grail. She's trying to win this regatta, and the uh, Swedes did, gave no room to tack there. Meanwhile, Beckering was able to uh, tack very cleanly, and she's got the high lane. Sarah Steyart from France fully trapped out at the leading pack. She's on... I uh, haven't seen a decision from the umpires on that yet. Martine Grail hasn't done too badly. She's lost, obviously, her first lane position, but she's sailing nicely on... Uh, on a high lane with clear winds. As we see all the coaches and uh, media crews following up the sidelines. Looks to me like uh, Beckering's in a battle with Stayart for the lead, but uh, Martine Grail's recovered nicely from that incident she had with the Swedish. She's got a nice high lane and she's able to take that up. Also of uh, paramount importance is how well Nielsen's doing. She's far right at the far end uh, depth-wise of the screen. Hasn't tacked yet, still on port. She just ducked Stayart, who came back on starboard. That's the French. Uh, and now we'll get our first cross. Nielsen now tacks at the boundary that was. We'll see if those two are making the mark or not. But uh, Beckering looks to me like she's the one who's going to cross ahead here of Stayart. No, it's going to be very close. And then Martine Grail has also put herself back into a great position. Good sailing from her. She had to do two extra tacks in the corner. But I think this wind is bent left. That's why we're seeing so much port on this beat. And uh, Beckering goes for her tack. Let's see what Martine Grail does here. She's got a decision to make, and she goes for the duck. So uh, let's see if there's a gap. Oh, and she's going to have to duck even more, so that's... Oh, she's got to duck the whole group. So after recovering so well, she then had to duck almost the entire group. Both Danes made it around. And now Grail's back into uh, ninth position. And it won't be much of a downwind here as the two boats, as the boats are going straight set. There's Nielsen with the black spinnaker in fourth place. Uh, our leaders are the Dutch, followed by the French, I believe. Nielsen goes for a jive. Interesting. No, that's uh, your sock going for a jibe with the black spinnaker going away from us. And uh, we see Nielsen rolling. Uh, Nielsen's making a pass there. So Nielsen just rolled her teammate, Hansen, in the red spinnaker. Nielsen's in the black spinnaker with the blue splash. Uh, and then the Dutch will be coming in here. The Dutch are probably trying to sink low. So they only have to do one jibe here through to the finish. We've had quite a big shift for a four minute beat actually there's nielsen going for her jibe she's obviously decided she's not gonna be able to do it in two her teammate that she rolled handsome behind her here goes simultaneous jibes from first and second place as uh beckering and deutsch go for their jibe everyone's got clean jibes so far complicated lane here at the close to our screen we see Martine Grail and Kaina Kunz they held their uh, port or their starboard jibe really for a long time and have gone all the way in to the lane boundary they're looking to make a pass on a huge bunch here um, if they can get inside room at the mark let's focus on that blue spinnaker Sam if we can if they can get inside room at this mark they'll have passed about six or seven boats all at the at the last minute including the team that's most important for them to pass we got Oh, massive bunch of boats all coming in together and it looks to me like Grail does have room on them all kind of or her crew goes for the douse and Grail huge pass that could prove critical to the overall victory Grail goes from ninth to third in this lap as all the teams pile in and the loser out of the bunch is Nielsen Nielsen was the first to jibe so she was outside all of them and she's dropped from third 
back into probably seventh or eighth place. We see uh, one of the German teams bail out and go to the far side. Clearly that gate uh, wasn't even with the wind shift, so everyone's trying to get to the close gate. And Martine Grail, great sailing from her. She, uh, she was in, put in a tough spot in that first beat with the Swedes. Uh, we w might have expected the Swedes to tack and allow, uh, and allow the boats ahead of them to go, but they didn't. They held starboard. Martine Grail went for the tack and avoided uh, any contact. Almost made the pass in the first beat, and then we saw her make the pass in the second beat. That's the kind of sailing that's put her into such a consistently high position at all the regattas we've seen so far this year. Oh, and Nielsen at the back there, um, uh, Sam. Nielsen's having to do a 360, so disaster for Nielsen. She was in a great position, rolled her teammate to move from fourth to third on that run halfway through, and then just jibed, I think, too early. Wasn't able to get a lane for the lured marks outside of the pressure and uh, disaster for her. Mid-pack here, or at the leaders, we see uh, Beckering from the Netherlands sailing uh, very cleanly along with, so is Sarah Sayert in second place. Martine Grail in a pretty comfy third. And then we see Dobson. We haven't talked about her yet this race. She's in fourth place right now, uh, possibly battling with the Spanish, but I think she's gonna be ahead of them. And uh, that'll just about wrap up the bronze medal for her. Stayart, no, it's too far back to uh, put pressure on Dobson. Maybe the Dutch. The Dutch uh, were in fourth place to start the day. Didn't have the best race, but with a bullet here, they could th probably mathematically still reach uh, Dobson, uh, but only just. So, last windward mark here. Quick race, and uh, Beckering comes in, clean set from her and clean and low set very important to keep a low set when you've uh, got a jibe to the finish here in a, in a close leg stay art doesn't have quite as low a set so I don't think she'll be able to put on any pressure from behind and there's grail the holy grail some call her or her father at least uh, so maybe she's holy junior comes in in third place the Spanish I do think are have to Dobson so Dobson's down in fifth that's a, that's a four-point gain to uh, Beckering if it closes out this way, which could be enough to uh, help her and her chances. Next round the mark is uh, Hansen. So she's uh, had a pretty eventful race, to be honest, uh, getting rolled on that first downwind and then uh, re recovering nicely to uh, be mid-pack. And then we've got... Let's just focus here on the front battle here, yeah. So we've got uh, Beckering has jibed, so is Stayart. Beckering's uh, directly downwind, a very conservative position, should be no trouble there. You can see Beckering moving in and out of the boat, so is uh, Annette Deutsch as the... Uh, they're going broadside to the swell. So the swell is now shifted over to the other side of them as the wind is skewed, and it's a very tricky, uh, tricky way to handle the pressure. So that both both crews are having to work the waves here as they surge ahead, and then slow down as the wave passes them. We see Grail in the foreground. She's a, done the same strategy she did on the first downwind; has gone right to the boundary. Ooh, tough place to jibe there. She's just lost her pressure, and we see uh, Echigoyen. Going for a clean jibe, yeah. Good jibe from the Spanish, but I don't think it'll be enough to put pressure on Grail. One more jibe for the leaders and in through the finish for them. So that's a solid victory for Beckering. She'll be happy with that after a poor race to start the, to start the day. Stayart, uh, probably the most consistent sailor we've, uh, we've seen in the 49er FX fleet, has another good race herself. That's the, that's the victory horn right there. Stay art through in second. Grill should be third. And then we've got uh, battle here, Hansen. Chasing Dobson, chasing the Spanish. We see the, Do uh, we see the Dobson's just jived onto starboard, so she's got rights, but the Spanish go on top of her. And the red spinnaker is Hansen. Let's see if she's close enough to put pressure on either of them. Ooh. Dobson surging for the finish line. Well, we'd only be guessing if uh, we'd only be guessing to know which one of them crossed first. I'm going to call it Dobson, though, from this distance. Not an easy call, but uh, 
got to go one way or the other. So that's Hansen in sixth, uh, Jersok in seventh, and then we've got another close one here between uh, Lutz and Klinga, and I'm going to call that one for Lutz. So that would be eighth place for Lutz, ninth place for Klinga, and back of the pack, Nielsen with 10 points. Um, really dramatic change of fortunes there for Nielsen. She was in a position uh, to take, uh, well, to, become, to pull one place back of Grail. Nielsen uh, was in third place with Grail in uh, ninth as we were halfway down that run. But uh, it all changed at the bottom of the run as Grail played a great move to go, to hold uh, all the way to the ley line. Uh, Nielsen got caught in the outside of a pack and then also had to do a 360, was never able to recover. So that's, uh, I'll just double check my math. Actually, that's, uh, I think we can call the victory there for Grail. 53 points for her, 66 for Nielsen. That's right. So that's the win. Grail's just won the regatta. Sorry I was so slow to pick up on that, but uh, that's the way it is. In our battle for, so also, Nielsen confirms her silver, silver medal position. And finally, the bronze medal, I've got Dobson on 85 points, Beckering on 95 points. So actually, that's the bronze medal wrapped up as well. The only thing that would be different there is if I called it wrong at the line and Echegoyen had the four and Dobson had the five, in which case it would still be mathematically possible for Dobson uh, or for Beckering to pass Dobson uh, with a one versus ten finish. So could be our medal podium wrapped up. That was a very intense last second lap or first lap of that race. It won't be long now until we can uh, Till we bring you the final race of this series, but we'll just sign off now and uh, update the scoreboard and get that to you. And we'll be back, uh, shouldn't be more than 10 minutes till the start of the next race.
Okay, sorry. Sorry about that, everyone. Had the scoreboard up, but we've got it back now uh, to the racing, and we're at uh, eight and a half minutes to go to the start. The race officials have adjusted the course, and now we're good to go again. Looks like the typical Seabreeze direction is in. Just looking over my shoulder right now, I can see a 49er team warming up, and it uh, looks to be just under 10 knots, maybe 10 knots. We believe the championship is wrapped up at this point for Martin Grail and Kaina Kunz of Brazil. They uh, almost won the North American championship. The very last minute they were uh, called OCS in the last race, disqualified for being over the line early and fell back into second place. Uh, and they were in, had quite a big lead at that point. But uh, this will be a satisfying victory for the duo from Brazil. and. Uh, following in their father's footsteps of sailing greatness. Uh, this is their first World Cup victory, I believe. Uh, no, they won, uh, they won Miami in 2013, but certainly the fleet's a lot bigger than that now, and uh, they'll be very satisfied with this victory. Dramatically coming from behind, it's the second race of the day here from, uh, to leapfrog from ninth to third place in one leg. Neil, uh, Eda Nielsen, Denmark 11. She's got the uh, silver medal wrapped up on uh, 66 points. And uh, we believe Charlotte Dobson has the bronze medal wrapped up. Uh, there's a chance that uh, we got the score wrong through the finish line there. And that uh, if she comes last and Beckering comes first in this race, that she might lose the bronze medal. But that would be pretty unlikely to happen anyways, and uh, we think we got the score right. So really what we're talking about here is the middle of the pack. The uh, middle placings, we've got uh, Beckering on 95. We've got Echegoyen on 97. And we've got Stayart on 102. Those are the most likely teams to make a punch forward here, and we'll see how the race plays out. Sam, this is Bill. Hi, Sam. How are you doing? <laughs> okay. With uh, four minutes to go coming up to the start here, uh, luckily for us, sailing fans, we're joined by judge and race officer Bill O'Hara from Ireland. Say hi, Bill. Yeah, how are you doing, guys? So hopefully everyone can understand an Irish accent. <laughs> I'll do my best to translate if necessary, but uh, Bill's one of the sharpest eyes around the sailing and I know you've been looking at uh, things like our rules for us on the umpiring of these races and 
And uh, we just saw in the last race, you weren't here to watch it, but we saw in the last race four, uh, about six boats come off the line on starboard and head to that uh, boundary. The first two gave way, you know, at the same time, but then that third boat didn't. And actually the, the boat in the middle had to tack back. That was Grail. Yeah. And uh, it was very close as to what needed to be done. What are you guys looking for in situations like that? It's really difficult for the umpires because it depends on when the heels are made and is there time to respond. But when you ask for room to tack at the boundary, you only get room to tack and avoid. So once you complete your tack, it could be to better off or tack back. Well, and certainly that was the case. Uh, Grail was able to tack and tack back, yeah. and uh, it was it was tight, you know. And any more wind, she might not have been had been able to, but clearly she was able to. Um, I didn't see what the umpire's call was, but no one did circles, so uh, so clearly they thought the same thing as the sailor as the Swedish sailor thought, and that uh, Grail had room to tack back, which is what she did. Uh, it was a contentious moment, quite possibly, as Grail was fighting for the victory at the time, but uh, she was ninth to the windward mark, and then came through to pass six boats on that first downwind to get up to third to seal the victory. So it all worked out in the end. Yeah, it's hard to beat speed. It's hard to beat speed, yeah. Well, it was actually a tactical move. She uh, she did really well, so that was good. We've got a bit of mess in front of us with a group of Opties training right in their camera lens, but Sam will do his best. Here comes a fin. <laughs> and now a fin. Uh, we've seen a few people practicing. We're at two minutes, 12 seconds to go to the start. And uh, just to summarize what, uh, what we're looking for to happen here, we've got the Metal podium just about wrapped up, um, but Etchegoyen and Beckering are only two points apart for the fourth place. And uh, another five points back is Stayart from France. And only, and then we've got Jersok and Hansen, another five points roughly behind that. So there can definitely be a couple uh, minor place changes here in the final race of this regatta. And, <clears throat> and following this race, we'll have the 49ers who we can see are coming out from the harbor now. and. Uh, ready to get their racing going. One minute 30 to go to the start. So Bill, give us an idea of what the umpires are looking at with about a minute 30 to go in a 49er start. So what happens is they put the fleet into three groups and, um, and from the committee boat, their umpire one, two and three, and they look after the first group of active boats. Um, they're looking for how overlaps are established because if the overlaps established from behind, then after the starting signal, they, people have to start sailing the proper course. Sorry to interrupt you there, that was the one minute flag going down. And um, and also just looking out to see if any infringements. Uh, often the 49ers they do this thing where they tack up to the next windward boat and then tack back in front of them. So lots of tacking going on and lots of changes of right of way. We see, we see that right now at the, the closest boat to us is uh, Dobson, GBR 22, and she just completed a double tack and now she's going into another one. And uh, what you're looking for is how far they're turning their boats through the wind or otherwise, is that right? Yeah, well, obviously when you go past head to wind, you become a giveaway boat. But quite often you've gone there because the boat to windward is also tacked up to the next boat. So she becomes, you know, it, it, the right of way changes a lot in the whole setup. And it's very hard to keep track of it. Yeah, uh, typically these 49er teams are, are all trying to dare each other to be the last attack. So uh, they'll push it right to the limit and some people will push it too far. 10 seconds to go to the start here. We can see the teams lining up and making their final accelerations. That's go. Uh, your sock from Germany six goes on starboard or on port. So does Grail. Everyone else is on starboard coming towards us. Off the pin end, it looks to me like that's Ida Nielsen from Denmark with a great start. She uh, is just being covered up here by uh, Botten from Spain, who's uh, watching the proceedings, and he'll be sailing the next uh, race for the 49ers. Who else is doing well here? We've got Beckering uh, from the Netherlands, midline. Sarah Stayart, she needs a good race to make a couple more passes from France. That's uh, France 3 has had to tack and duck, so not a good start for her. Beckering won the second race uh, of the day, and now she's having a good lane here. Uh, Dobson just had to tack and duck, and Nielsen's now tacking. Looks to me like she's going to also have to duck. So Beckering, great start from the boat end. What are you seeing, Bill? Yeah, to be honest, I don't know the fleet as well as you do, Ben, but it's, um, it looks to me that, uh, who's that boat? I think, I think um, Grail's done a really good move there. She looks like she's by out in the whole fleet. Yeah, so Grail uh, was on port at the pin end of the line to start the race, and she uh, was patient, and she's now gone through on port with speed. She's crossed over Jersok, and uh, if she's 
timed it right now. She won't have to, she'll have to do more than one tack, but she's definitely looking good here. She's looking like the front row. Yeah, I think she, you, should, you might make it, well, she make it one tack, she might. It's the uh, red marker, the yeah, yellow the one is one, the, yeah. the yellow marks are the top of the lane boundaries. And, and so uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's a little tricky to see yeah. the angles, but we do see now Beckering uh, from the Netherlands is on port. She's now in charge of the fleet, able to come across as uh, Klinga from Sweden, just above her line, and Nielsen, Denmark 11, uh, in a tough spot really actually, probably getting disturbed air from Beckering, uh, not able to tack out because of the Swedes, Klinga. We see now Grail coming across, she's got starboard advantage, she's got an encounter with Dobson here, let's see if Dobson has to adjust, oh, Grail uh -huh. tacks underneath, okay. doesn't take the starboard advantage, didn't want to cross the fleet there, maybe she couldn't cross. Yeah, she couldn't cross, if she could cross she would have, I think. I think you're right. So Grail, not, oh, she looks like she's done a 360, she's almost stopped. Yeah, so she's a big bear off after the tax, so she, yeah, that's strange. I'm not sure what's going on there. You know, to be honest, she's got this championship wrapped up, so she may have just decided to keep her nose clean. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> well, you're right, you might just stay out of the way, yeah. not affect other people. Yeah, so I don't know if that's what the case, maybe we can ask her later, yeah. but she definitely was in the mix and is now out of the mix and uh, yeah. for no, there's no reason for her to be too worried about it either. No. Okay, so uh, back at the front end of the fleet, I think we see a number of boats tacking back onto starboard, but I'm going to guess that they're not on ley line. The Swedes, I think, are the first boat on ley line along with Beckering. So the Swedes tacked underneath Beckering and uh, the, the picture is just being disturbed by a few of our 49er teams warming up here. Swedes, if they're able to make this mark, they'll be in first. I'm guessing they're pinching because it doesn't look like they're going too fast. And that's Nielsen, Denmark 11. She's done a number of passing moves on this first on this bearway, so we'll see if she's going to try and roll these guy these other two teams as they come in slow to the mark and she's on their hip. Clean roundings though for everyone so far. Uh, Nielsen in third. And that is Dobson in fourth. She's been uh, fourth both races so far, so uh, very consistent sailing from her. It's Hansen in fifth uh, in the red spinnaker, doing a low set there. And Yersok in sixth in the black spinnaker, followed by Steart, Echegoyen, and then there's Grail, and I think that'll be Tina Lutz in last place. So the team's all coming towards us. They're getting close to the boundary. We'll see Klinga go for her jibe. There she goes. Simultaneous jive from Beckering and uh, Nielsen not able to put pressure on either of them so she's going to have to take an outside lane. Dobson comes back across early wanting to avoid any of the bad water but uh, terrible jive from Dobson. She uh, hit a wave right at the same time as she jibed. We'll see if Yersok in the black spinnaker is able to take advantage and I think she is. Are you getting that uh, Sam? Yersok passes Dobson and Dobson hasn't recovered from her jibe yet. Just now, just finally getting uh, some more air as Jersok uh, leaps forward in the fleet. Let's just pan forward to the leaders. Really good course right now, actually, very even. Uh, the first jab they had to do from um, starboard on the port is always a tricky one because you're putting yourself in a giveaway position, but they all managed it okay. The jive on this, on the other lay line is, is a lot easier because you're coming right away when you jive. Yeah, it's, and it's like that in open course racing as well. You, teams spend four or five minutes all fighting to get the lane to jive back. Yeah. It's, a, it's a real fight, and, uh, and that low set, if you're able to do it when you bear away and still keep your speed, is, is a really a, a aggressive weapon if you want to be able to jive inside someone. Speaking of uh, passes, I think we've got one in uh, for second place there. Eda Nielsen was able to hold her line a little bit longer and has now jibed on top of Beckering. Uh, if she's able to soak low to this mark, she'll be in second place, moved up from third place. Just slows down to soak down to that mark. Beckering goes for a jibe and goes the opposite direction. So we've got a split with the two, uh, we'll, call, uh, we'll call Nielsen in second and uh, Beckering in third going opposite directions. And now we've got a big battle for uh, coming into the mark here with all the rest of the teams basically even. They've probably covered and fought each other all the way downwind. Hansen's going to counter Lucky Stars that she's clear of the mess. But behind that, we've got, uh, 
We've got Jersock, and on the far side with the black spinnaker, she'll have right away on that far mark. What's Stayart going to do with the red spinnaker? Stayart. Oh, so there's Hansen had to do another jibe at the bottom. Echegoyen inside of uh, Stayart comes to the close side. Jersock made it round cleanly. So did Dobson with more speed than the teams coming to the close side. So Dobson uh, recovered fairly nicely, only lost one place in that downwind, but is at risk of losing another. And we see Lutz uh, tax immediately after her lured rounding. And uh, Grail, we think, is just nursing it around the course, uh, taking it easy with her victory already secure. In the foreground, don't get confused with the France six boat. That's Julian Dortoli warming up for the 49er race to happen just after this. Just behind uh, him is Ida Nielsen in third place in this race. He'll be looking, she'll be looking to move up a little bit more uh, just to make the scoreboard look better, I guess, and feel good about herself. Anything else you notice there, Bill? Well, that mutt gate rounding with between places four and six or four and nine was a nightmare for the umpires because they, <laughs> you know, there's everything going on there and it's really, really hard to be in position to see it all. Uh, so I'm not sure whether there were any flags or not, but it'd be very, very hard to answer it. Yeah, 49ers, say, I mean, it is messy at those lured marks, just as we see here, the exact situation we talked about it with the boat coming off the uh, left boundary, that's Nielsen, sorry, that's Hansen, Denmark 136. Uh, are you on the pack at the back there, Sam? She, uh, she had to tack, and she was able to clear um, Tina Lutz, no problem, but now she has to duck Dobson. So Dobson's managed to stay up into fifth, uh, but that's a situation where Nielsen or Hansen was forced to tack and then had to deal with some starboard tack boats, but she navigated it uh, swiftly. But what we were talking about there at the leeward gates, it's often very messy in the 49er fleet, but what's even messier is crashing. So luckily, uh, most of the teams do seem to avoid each other most of the time, yeah, yeah. and uh, there may be fouls, but typically there aren't collisions. It's just too messy to crash. No, that's right. I, I mean, it was interesting. When the fleet first started off, like way back, they, they really cared more about getting the boat around, and, and, but they've got so good now that they're getting more and more rural tuned, I think, because they've got the control. Oh, you're exactly right. At, at the beginning, it was just keep the mast in the air, and you'd come <laughs> top 10 no matter what. And uh, certainly now there's, I mean, we saw both the second and third place teams from our world championship didn't make gold fleet this week. Um, so, you know, the fleet is very deep. The boats are very even. Uh, everyone's got access to the same equipment. And, uh, and with the short races, uh, it's really tight racing, and people are having to push the rules and use every uh, tool they have to make advantage. Just looking at the front of the fleet now, we've got Hansen, uh, sorry, Nielsen of Denmark tacking inside Beckering. If she's able to hold that off, uh, then she'll have made another pass on this leg, and uh, or held that pass rather, so she has. Nielsen's in second place now with her Lindbergh's branded spinnaker uh, in the black. And uh, Beckering's fallen back to third place. Another good race from her, though. She won the second race of the day. And she is, uh, will be securing fourth place overall with the race she's having. We see uh, Grail. Uh, I mean, we were guessing she wasn't trying hard. Uh, we didn't know that. But she's definitely put herself back in the mix with her, yeah, good with her sailing. Yeah, absolutely. Great recovery. Uh, that's Jersock round in fifth with the SAP branded spinnaker with the black. Uh, very similar look to the Lindbergh spinnaker in the black as well, same colors that uh, Nielsen's holding. Susan Boyka, or sorry, Tina Lutz, round in, it's gotta be one, fifth place, so sixth place. So she's moved up on that leg. And we see Echegoyen uh, has got shuffled to the back of the fleet with her finish here. Huh. Grail's now up into sixth, seventh place so a very solid beat from you we actually weren't following her story that much because we didn't think she was pushing it uh, so i don't know exactly how she made all those passes but she did well, she last one out to the um, port ley line uh or the ley line the port uh what do you call them well she was she on the close track. side was she, she on the came, left she of the came track to our side, yeah, yeah, yeah she was on the close side of the track yeah. i mean typically we do see left upwind in this sea breeze condition favored here in palma so uh that's the side she was playing, and what do you know, it paid off. Yeah. I see Sam panning back to the leaders as they head to the finish line, uh, try and avoid the British boat in the background. That's uh, 
I think that's one of the, well, one of the British teams who are about to compete here. But this is Hannah Klinga coming into the finish line uh, to take this victory. There she goes through the with the win in her final race of the day. And just behind, we see Beckering uh, getting a little payback possibly on Nielsen. Nielsen rolled Beckering on the first downwind of the day, and now Becker and now uh, Nielsen. So now Beckering's rolling Nielsen. Uh, looks to me like she's going to get across the line first. Bill, I'll just pass this to you so I can mark down the score. Yep, no problem. Man. Oh, so maybe they're not through the line yet. Looks like simultaneous jibes. Yeah, so I think Nielsen held off there. Got the roll at the end. I'm going to call that to Nielsen. What do you think? Is that fair? So I was I was looking at the boats behind them. I apologize. No problem. I didn't see it. Just sock through and forth. And Grail might get fifth. Yeah, it's hard to see with the depth whether Dobson's ahead of Grail. I think Dobson probably is ahead of Grail right now. Well, yeah. Sure, she's top of uh, there. Yeah, okay, yeah, she's crossing. Dobson so it'll be sixth. Into fifth. Grail sixth. No, maybe not. Sorry, not. Yeah, they get Black Spinnaker with sixth. Uh, the Sluts. Yeah. Real hole held on the seven. Uh, I think that left Hansen in the eighth. Uh, and the stay art, ninth. And Echegoyan in tenth. So I'll just do some quick math here. actually very close here with the results so I unofficially of course because we're calling this from a great distance Grail in first place as we expected on 60 points Nielsen second place overall on 68 points Dobson third overall with 90 points fourth Beckering on 98 points and then by my math we've got Echegoyen on 107 Lutz on 108 Jersok on 110 and Stayart on 111, Hansen on 115, and Klinga on 129. So uh, looks like Hansen's the odd uh, team out today. Moved from seventh to ninth. Uh, Jersok moving the other direction from ninth to sixth, or s maybe seventh. And uh, Echegoyen has passed one boat to move from sixth to fifth. Uh, While well, they were tied coming into the day. And that's our standings. That's the 49er FX racing, uh, folks. Uh, don't go away. Uh, very shortly here, we've got the 49er racing uh, coming up. And uh, congratulations to Martin Grail and Kaina Kunz of Brazil on their uh, world, first World Cup victory of 2014. Anything to say, Bill? Well, that's great. <laughs> I enjoyed watching it. Okay. Yeah. We'll be back with you probably sh should be less than 10 minutes to the start of the 49er race.
Okay, we've just seen the red flag go up, meaning 10 minutes to go to the start for this 49er race. Um, we'll go back and forth putting the uh, screenshot on and the scores so folks at home can uh, follow along and jot down the scores. Uh, they'll be a little quicker than I am uh, with a one-man operation here, but uh, looks like really nice racing. We're probably up to almost 10 knots, 8, 9, 10 knots. Sunny day here in Palma, and the 49ers uh, anxious to stretch their legs and see how they can do it on this course. We'll be back to you uh, with five minutes to go. So uh, for those of you who are watching the committee boat, they saw the white flag go up, the white 49er emblem. That signals five minutes to go until the first race of this theater style final here in Palma de Mallorca. I'll just flash the uh, starting scores for you uh, to jot down.
we'll flip back to the racing and introduce my co-anchor here, Bill O'Hara. Okay, we've just got some... Okay, so uh, just on a bit of a highway here, it seems at times. But uh, anyways, introducing uh, our friend, uh, friend of the class, Bill O'Hara. Say hi to the folks out there, Bill. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, they're, they're all starting on starboard this time, it looks like, Ben. Yeah, it does. We, uh, at least they're all lining up on starboard, which would make sense. Uh, typically, it is left side favored here with the uh, sea breeze. However, there probably isn't going to be room for 10 boats on starboard, so my guess is that a couple will bail out at the last minute. But it's quite easy to flip onto port with, say, uh, 30 seconds or a minute to go. Uh, very difficult to get a spot on starboard. So if you line up on starboard, you can always change your dis change your mind. It's very hard to do the opposite. Yeah. And we uh, see that now away, some yeah. ta some tacking and some double tacking. If you're tacking back, that was a kiwi. So uh, we, earlier in the day, we were talking, uh, and as we see, that's uh, Dylan Fletcher. He's gone for the port tack start, yeah. so he's given up on his spot. Uh, <laughs> as soon as we say that, uh, Nico de la Carth. He's jumped into the spot that's vacated. Diego bought in Spain. Uh, he's in tight. He sailed well this week. But uh, we were just talking about how closely the umpires are able to watch these battles on the start line in the 49er. Yeah, the start line uh, is, is okay because, as you say, they're in the line and we pick our three boats in our section and we're it's usually okay. The problem is um, going into that first uh, tram line or the boats on starboard. We have to be aware of all the calls and all the hand signals to know how to rule if there's a problem. 23 seconds to go to the start here. Looks like uh, looks like a couple Brits. That's uh, Dave Evans lining up for the pin. Uh, he's got his countryman John Pink just above him, and then we've got the Austrians. Really look like they've got a good good hole if they can accelerate well. And that's the start. Swedes have a good start. Middle of the line. So do the Austrians. Germans, Eric Heil and Thomas Plosel are the boat farthest at the boat, so they'll be the ones uh, that dictate uh, the starboard advantage here, and it'll be uh, John Pink having a tack out. So Dave Evans, he's the uh, first boat to get to this boundary, and uh, he'll be looking to pinch as high as he can here, close the gap to the Austrians and, and force them to give him space to attack. Uh, our leaders, New Zealand won, having to tack out, so they've been pushed out. There's Dave Evans going for his tack now. See what happens with the Austrians here. He, he's room to avoid so he can go behind. He's, yeah, oh, that's exactly back. what's he's happening. Back. He's yeah. tacking yeah. back. Wow, so he must have had a very good acceleration yeah. there. You're going to have to ask again. And there you go for the Austrians. Yeah. Tacking. A little bit of a delay there for Evans. And but now, uh, the, the Germans. now the Germans are going to go he's for it. He's on starboard, so if he, they can't cross him, they're in big trouble. Oh, and they crossed him. Yeah, okay. So the Germans just didn't have the speed of the runway. In the America's Cup, we saw a different rule, didn't we? We saw about, uh, I don't know what the rule was, three, no, 30 uh, seconds or three. No, no, no. And uh, three boat lengths from the, the edge of their course, you became right of way uh, when you tacked. But the moment you left, you became giveaway again. So it, <laughs> you had so to it, really know where the three boat lengths yeah, was. You had to be very, ah. very sure where three were, otherwise you'd be in trouble. But that's, okay, that's obviously, it, it was similar to this in the fleet racing. But in the cup itself, only two boats, it was a bit easier to work with. Okay, so unfortunately we've got a spectator. Uh, well, good for him, he's got a great view of the racing, but uh, our cameras, our fleet's now going behind this, uh, this sailor, but that's okay. Uh, we see the Austrians punching forward. Uh, they held Dave Evans out and, uh, and have extended here. Looks like they'll be first to the windward mark if, uh, if everything goes as it seems like it will. Just looking to see where Dave Evans ended up. He's got shuffled to the back, and I don't know exactly how because it looked like he was doing well. And what number is he again? He's 98. 98, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and uh, mention people's numbers. The closest boat to us is Dylan Fletcher, GBR4. Uh, so he, he started on port and went to the far side, uh, came back with starboard rights, and uh, wasn't quite as punched out as the Austrians, but uh, has found a lane and is doing well. So is... Torado of, uh, it's actually Botten of Spain. I'm trying to go by the skipper's name so it's easier for you guys at home. Botten is uh, Spain 900 and Sylvan is uh, Sweden. On the ley line, looks like Botten and Sylvan are going to come together. 
Uh, Botten goes to the tack, and he looks like he's completed his maneuver before the Swedes overtook him. So it's uh, the Austrians into the weather mark first. They've uh, nice and high, so they'll be able to set set low with speed. Should be uh, off to the races for a team of that caliber. Uh, Dylan Fletcher in second. So we see one boat on starboard, one boat on port. First two into the mark. Wow, there's some terrible waves there. I'm not sure exactly what's that from. Uh, Alan, Alan, Dylan Fletcher's crew will have to dealt with those waves as he's also gone in the boat, but he's pulled it off. Sylvan in third, Botten in fourth. Uh, that's Dave Evans in fifth. I think that's War in sixth with the red spinnaker uh, in a real tight battle with, can't quite make out that flag. Uh, Dortoli has jibed, the pink spinnaker, so he's jibed set. Uh, and that's Heil, Eric Heil in uh, Germany 12. And uh, the Kiwis in the rear at the moment. Yeah, they, they were maximum right on that first side. They went up the right-hand side and this didn't work out for them. Yeah, they got flushed out on the start. Didn't uh, didn't hold their lane, tacked out early, and it hasn't worked out at all. Yeah, it looks like left's good, good again. So it's, um, Quite typical with normal racing. Uh, you get flushed out and you're late to go right to, uh, in a place that's left favored. doesn't work out for you. No. But the Kiwis have held their lane here. They've uh, extended all the way to the close boundary. We saw Grail have some success with that in the... Uh, in the women's race and the 49er FX racing earlier today. Yeah, they got clear at the moment, so they might be okay out of that. They certainly look good from here. Yeah, they do look they good. might run into some dirty air. Looks just yeah. there, like uh, either the swell or the air is not as clean as they like. On the far side, we see Dortoli in the pink spinnaker, quite lit up. He's got starboard advantage, so uh, we see Dave Evans in the light blue spinnaker, middle of the screen. He's uh, He's jived right on top of Dortoli. Dortoli's gonna try and go through, but there's there's no route through to Leward when the boat's up to speed. So we see him uh, slow down. And uh, now D Dave Evans, GBR 98, surges forward. So he is uh, moved up into fourth place here as we see the Austrians have already rounded. Dave, uh, or Dylan Fletcher's already rounded. Botten, Spain is through into third place. Dave Evans, fourth place going for the jive drop. Ooh, see how close it is. And Dortoli and Dave Evans going through together, splitting sides. And Eric Heil going to the far side. We see Jonas War in the red spinnaker trying to go underneath for the jive drop. See how quickly he's able to get uh, around the marks here. It's very congested at the back of the fleet. Anything you seeing here, Bill? Well, the majority of them wanted to get uh, to come over to this side um, because been paying off, uh, but really, in sailing, there's not much going on, to be honest with you. Well, we see Eric Heil doing a 360 now. Uh, I'm not sure if he fouled someone or uh, or if he hit the mark, but he was about six heading into that set of gates and is now in last. Up the race course a little bit, we see Dylan Fletcher on the close side, GBR4. He's trying to make a move on uh, the Austrians, Nico de la Carth. And uh, he's definitely closed the distance. Oh, he's just big gain, big yeah. gain. So we're, we think we're seeing the close side favor, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, with the, this cross, I think the spectators are gonna get in the way. But Dylan's not, oh, he's just ducked. So they're only a boat length apart. Yeah. Dylan's borne off there to take a wide duck. And uh, that's halfway up the beat. Now Nico's coming to the close side. So he's probably uh, in the better breeze for the second half here. But he'll have to do attack inside uh, inside Dylan when they meet again. Exactly, it'd be a giveaway boat when he comes back in again. Uh, I'm interested to see whether, I think obviously Dylan's going to go to the ley line because it's not worth doing three tacks, so he, he'll keep going. I'm looking for an umpire boat here. I see one trailing, I see one I think on the far side, but who's, who's responsible for these boats at the front? Uh, the top boat, I imagine. Uh, I, to be honest, I don't know because I'm not an umpire team here, but the plan was to have only one boat inside and have one boat covering the bottom bottom right and we'll covering the top left. Okay, so uh, thanks for explaining that. Yeah. So there, there's a boat looking down at these two. As uh, we, I assume you're looking at the front here as we see Dylan Fletcher pass the Nikos uh, for the lead in this race. Nico De La Carth just having to duck Dylan Fletcher here. So obviously Fletcher's got pace right now. Uh, you know, he, he, he went to what we didn't think was the favorite side up the first beat for some of it and now he's managed to sail himself all the way into the lead when the Nikos had quite a good lead to start with. Uh, Good race still from the Nikos, and then we see Botten in third. 
Yeah, yeah he's right. But he, got, he got a big port lift on the um, second upwind and just brought it back into the game. Yeah, good set there from uh, Fletcher and Sign, and they uh, stretch their legs as they surf down one of these waves. The 49ers will be really trying to get on these waves. They can probably go just about as fast as them and, and get a big advantage. Um, the waves are still passing them, but they can try and surf them for as long as they can. You can see how lightly uh, Fletcher and Sign go through that jibe. As we go through uh, jibe set from the... You know who we've lost? We've lost John Pink. Where's GBR 10? No, he's there. He's in second, second last. Okay. So Dave Evans is uh, jibe set, um, and Dortoli, close to screen, is another pink. He's in fifth. S sixth place, I think, are the Kiwis with the yellow jerseys. You can see them. Yes, that is. And then seventh is War and Lang. Okay, uh, Cameron Selmy, he's looking forward. So we've got uh, Dortoli in the pink spinnaker, along with, uh, Air with uh, Dave Evans in the light blue spinnaker. They rounded very close together, and Dave Evans was uh, jibe set. We'll see when the two come together here. Dave Evans will have starboard, but it looks to me like Dortoli is going to be through. Who are you on now, Sam? The leaders? Okay, so we're, we're looking at the leaders, and we can see uh, Dylan Fletcher going through his motions. He's got the final jibe to the finish. And uh, second place will be Nico De La Carth. Third place, Botten. And uh, if you pan back to the pink and blue spinnakers, uh, Sam, you can see uh, a close maneuver here. This is for fourth and fifth. Blue spinnaker goes behind the pink spinnaker. Looked very close, so I don't know if, uh, if the starboard boat uh, shouted to allow Julien Dortoli with the pink spinnaker to go through or not. Uh, but Dave and Ed look like they're pretty powered up and uh, we'll see if they can make a pass at the finish. I don't lay, they're okay, they have the jibe back. They could be they, close enough. Just like you say, they go for their jibe. Uh, won't be very easy for us to see who, uh, no. who crosses here unless it's, unless it's clear. Uh, I'm gonna call that for the French, they're, they're stopped now. Okay. Oh, very close, oh, very what's close finish. What's the French boat called? That's six, Dortoli, 10th uh, place. Oh yeah. That was for fourth. <laughs> That was for fourth, uh, putting then, Evans into fifth. Evans into fifth. And then we've got uh, New Zealand in sixth. Uh, Sylvan in seventh, the Swede. And uh, let's see if War. You know, I mean, uh, Dylan Fletcher's going to have put some pressure on Jonas War here for the second place. Overall, Jonas is through. Uh, War is through in seventh. Uh, pink in eighth. I, I'd, I'd... Sylvan Sorry, seven. yeah, yeah. yeah. War in eighth, yeah. Pink in ninth, and Heil in tenth. Heil having to do that 360. And I've uh, got my mathematician here beside me, uh, crunching the numbers as we speak. But uh, on the surface, that's a seven point gain to Fletcher, and he, and he was 14 points back. So, uh, unless I've got it wrong, I think he's now seven points back with two races to go right. to get uh, to move up from bronze to silver. And, uh, and I assume uh, actually. With, uh, with, with Fletcher doing so well, I think that's all three medals sewn up. Um, yeah, that is all three medals sewn up. We'll, get, we'll go over the list once uh, the math is finished crunch, but we're almost there. Uh, Burling on 62 points, still in the lead by quite a bit. Warrer on 85 points. Uh, now being challenged by Fletcher and Sign on 92 points. Delacarth, good race there, 111. <laughs> But he's 21, uh, 21 points back of Fletcher with only 20, with only 18 points left on the table. So the metal table's sewn up. But the order could change. Second the order third. could change. Second, third, the, th the three in the lead will all get medals. We can, we're still up for grabs on the color of bronze and silver. Um, Botten uh, on 113. And then we've got Evans on 118. Followed by Pink on 121, Heil on 136, Dortoli on 145, and uh, Sylvan on 148. So uh, we'll get that typed up and put it on the screen. Stay tuned for the next race. It won't be very far away. Uh, we expect in the next seven or eight minutes they'll get the next race started, and uh, we'll be back with more 49.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, I believe that's the five minute, no, it's not the five minute flag, is it? I think oh. I'm hearing the red flags going up and down. So, uh, jumping the gun a little bit, we've still got a couple more minutes to go to the next start. Um, having a little technology trouble with our scoreboard, but I can confirm for those of you interested that uh, Dylan Fletcher and Alan Sign have pulled to within seven points of Jonas War and Peter Lang. So uh, that's certainly a fight we'll keep our eyes on. In, uh, there's also a pretty good fight here for fourth place between Nico de la Carth and Diego Botten. That's Austria versus Spain. Anyways, we'll sign off again for now and be back with you just as soon as I get that five minute flag going. Yeah. Okay, we're back live here with uh, race two of the three race series about to um, about to start. Once again, we've got uh, this is the 2014 uh, Palma Regatta, the Palma World Cup, Trofea Princess Sofia. I'm Ben Remerker, class manager for the 49er class, here with Bill O'Hara, friend of the 49er class. And uh, we've got two races to go in a three race series. We're just coming up, uh, we think, to four minutes before the race. And we've got the top 10 from this regatta racing in uh, what we call theater style racing. So it's a 10 minute target time race and the teams uh, cannot exceed the boundaries that we've set on either side. Uh, 
coming into screen just shortly is uh, three other 49ers who have just gone sailing for the day, training. It's turned out to be a beautiful day here. The breeze is up to 12 knots, I'd say. And uh, sea breeze direction, uh, beautiful color of water here as uh, the teams are now fully stretched out in their trapezing. There's quite a bit of leftover chop and swell uh, through the day. And uh, we must have been inside four minutes already, eh? Because we haven't seen anything yeah, yeah, move, so we can't see the flag from here. So we're going to be a little bit off with our timing, but hopefully we'll be able to tell what's going on based on the behavior of the boats. Just to summarize the table in case, uh, the scoring table in case anyone hasn't been watching, uh, Burling and Took have confirmed their win, 62 points. Impossible to catch them. Warer and Lang, Denmark, 85 points. Seven points back is Dylan Fletcher and Alan Sign on 92 points. So there's seven points in the battle for the silver medal there. Nobody can catch Fletcher for the bronze. So uh, Warer and Fletcher, it's just between the two of them to see who's going to get the medal. In fourth place, Delacarth of Austria, 111. Fifth place, Botten from Spain, 113. Sixth place, Evans from GBR, 118. Uh, seventh place from GBR, one, two, one, uh, sorry, John Pink. Then we've got Eric Heil, Germany, one, three, six. Dortoli of France, one, four, five. And Sylvain of Sweden, one, four, eight. So a couple, couple minor pla or major places to uh, fight for, bronze and silver, fourth and fifth. And uh, a couple more fights a little bit farther down the standings. So we'll try and bring you the action here from Palma. Bill, you were just uh, watching, I think, the radial race uh, before this one, and you said there's a whole bunch of match racing. Do you think we're going to see anything like that here? Well, there must be a chance now that the, the second and third is up for grabs. So um, maybe not this race, but for sure the last race, if it's still close. I'm trying to focus on the flag here to try and get the one minute for you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, we see two boats drifting outside the pack of boats looking for the starboard start. That one of them's the French, and one of them's one of the three British teams we've got here. Uh, I'm going to call that Dave Evans. So we've got eight boats lining up on starboard, two, uh, two still thinking about it, and then we see the Germans also bail out of the starboard lineup. We saw the best start in the okay, last race. one minute. Okay, that's one minute. Yeah. Thank you very much. One minute to go. And uh, the last race, the best start uh, quite clearly went to the Austrians. And uh, they were midline, just like they're lining up to be right now. Uh, the Spanish also had a good start in the last race, midline as well. So uh, those two teams looking to repeat what they did in the first race. I'm surprised there's not more competition for the boat end of the line. Maybe the pins favored, but to be honest, that starboard advantage is very valuable with the boundary. Yeah, yeah. I think you know because the left side seems to be good. You want to get to the left as soon as you can. Um, Maybe three or four up would be the perfect place because it's too high risk if you actually start at the pin. Unless you do it perfectly, you're going to end up um, having to tack and duck. And this is the type of wind speed uh, that we see where if you can get a little bit more wind, you also get more height. Uh, when it's a little higher in wind speed, everyone's got the height. And when it's a little lower, it doesn't make a difference. But the power is really valuable in this middle wind speed. Let's start. Uh, there we go. We're off. We see uh, GBR. I think that's uh, I think that's GBR ten. Oh, two of them, ten and uh, so we've got the three boats going to the right, going to the far side. Our uh, left of your screen, sorry. Our pink is the leading boat, then Dortoli, then Dave Evans. Uh, we see the Austrian get flushed out, have to tack and duck, so they didn't have as good a start this time as they did last time. We also see. Dylan Fletcher having to tack and duck and tacking right on top of him is Jonas Warer. Yeah. So Warer, oh, but Fletcher's got through underneath. Oh, and they're all, because they're all having to duck uh, Sylvan. Duck, duck, duck another starboard boat, yeah. Okay, so uh, a lot are, of action right at the start there. Are now unless they're crossing. I think that was a last minute decision by Warer to try and uh, slam dunk Fletcher that hasn't worked out for him because Fletcher had enough pace to get through underneath. Uh, probably with the best start is uh, closest to our screen. Other than uh, Italy 26 is just spectating. Uh, Burling. Burling, G uh, New Zealand won. Yeah. He came off the pin with pace. 
was able to uh, establish dominance over the boats on his hip. If he, if he crosses had now, attack. Race over. Yeah, if he crosses <laughs> now, although we didn't see that uh, in the last race, but we had a guess with a guy as much, with yeah. as much pace as Burling that if he makes this cross, which he just had, that yeah. could be his victory. Uh, he's already got the title wrapped up, but uh, nothing like taking another race win. He'll be. <laughs> these guys are all practicing for the future, anyways. Uh, Sylvan coming across on port now, and uh, I don't. Oh, the guys underneath him tax. So uh, I didn't think he was going to make it. I think he started cracking off, but then they tax. So no problem there. That was John Pink tacking underneath Sylvan. And now uh, coming close to the boundary. Oh, Fletcher having a bit of a nightmare race here. He's just had to duck his teammate, uh, Dave Evans. I really wish the Italians would get out of the way. Maybe are you focused on the front of the race instead? Yeah, so we've got a few boats out training today, and uh, we need to direct them to the other side of the course. Warrer has uh, Denmark. Warrer has escaped uh, the madness that we've uh, that Dylan Fletcher's been caught up in, and he's escaped to the right side of the course. So uh, with a strong race here, he'll have wrapped up his silver medal. Looks to me like Burling went straight to the ley line there, and uh, will be close on that. You know what? The Swedes have definitely closed up though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So there's there's opportunities to pass if you can find lanes ways to get yourself to the right. Yeah, the Swedes had to duck to uh, t to get past Burling. So they're right on his tail. And then we see Warrer not too far behind that. Well, which number is Fletcher again? Fletcher's four. So he's, he's he actually, good. Yeah. he looks fine. He's, yeah. uh, he's made a couple ducks already this, yeah. uh, this beat, but he was farther left than the others. So let's see how aggressive Fletcher is with uh, Warrer here. He, uh, okay, so he tacks right on Warrer's line. I wonder how tough uh, the ley line is for Warrer now. Botten throws it in there. That was within two boat lengths, but... Uh, I said within three, yeah. But within yeah. three, thanks to you. And good to have an umpire on my shoulder. <laughs> he gets around, so... Uh, and then Fletcher's round, and uh, Warrer did make it. So the two, uh, two teams okay. are four, in fourth and fifth, battling for the silver medal. There's seven points in it, so Warrer has a bit of room here. But uh, Fletcher can make some passes and, and maybe force force a movement from war. It could get interesting for the last race. Uh, just behind them is Dave Evans. And then uh, the purple spinnaker is the Austrians. That's Nico de la Carth, followed by the Germans. And we see Dortoli, uh, pink spinnaker, in last place right now. Let's just catch up with our leaders as they head downwind. The class of the field all week have been Berling and Tuke. They won the 2013 World Championships and have won almost every other race uh, through the week here. So uh, no surprise that they've managed to win the, or get in the lead of this one. Yeah, no, I actually was uh, judge at the last World Championships and they were very, very good technique and off the start, very, very legal, but very, very um, quick. Yeah, not a lot of holes in their game. I think uh, all year we've seen them make one error, which is when they capsized in the first theater race of the uh, 2013 Europeans to put, a, put themselves under a lot of pressure. But uh, ever since then, they've won every regatta they've entered and, uh, and have already locked this one up. So good battle here between uh, Botten and Sylvan. To be honest, Sylvan's probably ahead uh, anyways. But then uh, let's let's go back to the big group there in the middle of the pack. We can see. Looks like. Um, unfortunately, we see the we got the spectator boats blocking our view. But uh, Dave Evans is in the light blue spinnaker. He's in a good position here. The Austrians are going to try and go above him, but they're not going to get over by the time they get to the lured marks. I don't believe so. Dave Evans should be. He looks like he's soaking to me to the left gate, and the Austrians will go to the close gate. And they've both managed to get past Fletcher and Warrer in this uh, downward leg. I don't know what's going on with Fletcher. Fletcher. It looks like he's mattressing him. Or trying to, he's really focusing on him for sure. He, you're right. <laughs> he's done. He's doing something here because uh, it, it, he's, you know, fast downwind. They need boats between them if they're going to catch up. Well, it's an interesting technique if that's what he's doing because uh, Warrer's got inside. So. Uh, all the boats are through here together. So, yeah, Warrer managed to pass. No, I don't think so. Ah, uh, Fletcher's. What? No, no Fletcher's Fletcher got bounced to the back. Fletcher's now, just now, rounding the oh, go the right gate. Oh, yeah, you're right. And uh, Warrer. So I'm not sure what's going on with Fletcher there. He 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 struggled in the middle of that downwind. Yeah. Maybe we can find out after uh, exactly what his tactics were. But whatever they were, they didn't go well for him. No.
pan up the fleet there, uh, Sam, and we see uh, we see Ward there, mid fleet. He's now roughly fourth place, maybe fifth, depending on how this the the Brit here or Dave Evans is doing. But the first three look pretty solid, don't they? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Sylvan. So uh, instead of just following Burling to the top right corner, Sylvan's yeah. come to the near side. He obviously feels that there's a little bit more pressure on this close side, and he's willing to put in one extra tack to get it. And actually, the, the New Zealanders have matched it. Uh, it only makes sense. Yeah, so the... They lost out at the top of the track. Some good right. ambition from the Swedes here to keep the game in play and not just follow the leader and uh, put some pressure on Burling. Uh, the Spanish have sailing another great race. In fact, uh, this race will put them into fourth place if it holds as it is. Uh, they've split and they've gone to the right, so a uh, little bit, little bit of action here in the second half of the beat. But yeah, Burling and Tuke now straight on top of the Swedes. They're not going to let any, any room grow. No, no. <laughs> Why would you? Is, is that Fletcher and Last then? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm Sam, uh, when he pan back to the group in the middle, it is actually pretty interesting. Um, we're going to get into run into traffic with the spectator boats again, but uh, we see Warer. Uh, he crossed that whole group on uh, starboard, except for John Pink, GBR10, and now he's just flipped onto port. And we see at the back of that group uh, is Dylan Fletcher and Alan Sign. They were in oh, so Wars had to duck Dortoli, and he's now uh, there. He goes. He's through, and let's see if he makes it across the Germans. If he doesn't make it across the Germans, then that means they both sailed themselves to the back. <laughs> Thank you, the cross. I think he's across as well, but the Austrians have moved back up, and that's important because the Austrians are in a fight with uh, with Bot uh, Botten, the Spaniard who's in third place, and uh, Botten will have been hoping to, for a few of these teams to, to stay ahead of the Austrians. The Austrians now tax, they're on ley line. Looks, like, looks to me like Dortoli's going to come across, and I think that's Dave Evans in the GBR boat in the middle of that tight group. Oh, oh. Okay, Botten saves that jive. I don't know if that was probably in screen, but it's somewhere there. The red spinnaker had a swell hit while they were jiving. But coming up to the ley line here, the war on starboard. Pink goes for the tack inside. Austria's now bounced all the way back to ninth. Heil tacks inside. So I think the close side did pay. Again. Close yeah. side paid. So the teams that are willing to put in an extra tack and get to the close side and get the better breeze are seem to be doing well at the top of this beat. And uh, I think that means well, there's not a lot Ooh. happening with uh, Warrer and Fletcher. No. But I think that does mean that Botten will have a pretty secure uh, gra gr grip on uh, fourth. Uh, my cameraman's motioning to me that uh, Burling and Tuker are in the lead, but let, don't bother with them, Sam. Uh, it's too boring to watch a boat sail in the lead. I can assure you, folks at home, that uh, Burling and Tuker are about 100 meters into the lead. And, uh, and are gonna win this race handily in about another five, 10 seconds. Mid-pack here, we've got Dortoli and, and De Dave Evans, uh, light blue spinnaker and pink spinnaker, fighting for about seventh, sixth, uh, or fifth place. I'll keep you guys posted on the lead, but it looks like Sylvan of uh, Sweden is gonna go through in second, and Botten of Spain gonna go through in third. So it's the mid, uh, the mid group here that the action is. Yeah. So those, those uh, second and third place is now through. Here's Dortoli going for his jibe. He's now on starboard. The Austrians coming through on port with a purple spinnaker. They've got uh, the Austrians now have war coming up. The Austrians jibe on top of Eric Heil. And it uh, looks to me like they've got him. So, uh, so the Austrians making a bit of a move here. And yeah, they've got it. So the Austrians have passed Heil, and also War is going to pass Heil here. So Heil getting bounced to the outside, and with the swell, he, he's not able to reaccelerate. Who's he crossing the line now? Uh, crossing the line now is Dave Evans, uh, followed by Dortoli. And that'll be the Austrians through in next. Yeah, it is. And then War. We, uh, we saw Dylan Fletcher have a tough uh, first downwind. It looks like he's doing slightly better on this next downwind. He 
Oh no, he's behind. Oh gosh, I don't know how we're going to be able to tell how Fletcher does here, but it could be over anyways. I'm going I'm to have to assume that uh, Heil is going to be ahead of Fletcher. It's, well, it's awfully close here, isn't it? They're all surging for the line at the same time. Let's call it... Let's call it Fletcher to be generous, then Heil, then uh, Pink. Uh, and we'll see if that math still makes it impossible to pass. But uh, it very well could have been another order. Tell Garth is the Austrian, is it? Yeah. yeah that's six, seven. Okay. okay, we've got our mathematician uh, crunching the numbers as we speak. But uh, that was a very good race for the Kiwis. They ran away with it. Um, and another good race for Diego Botten. First time to the... Okay, so we're going to wrap this up pretty quickly here. Our cameraman needs to change batteries for the next race. How, do you have a few more minutes? Uh, 30 more seconds, Sam? Okay, 30 more seconds. Let's go through the scores. We've got Burling on 63 points, miles ahead. Warrer on 92. Fletcher, we think on 100, yeah. but it could be 101. Yeah. And, uh, and if it's 101, it's impossible for him to get the bronze. If it's 100, yeah, 101, then... 101, he could still be one. Ah, uh, you're right. Champ, yeah. So we think he's got a chance. If Warrer's last and Fletcher wins, uh, we'll have to go to the the officials to find out what the real score is. But it, that, well, anyways, that's where it is. Botton's now on 116. Delacarth on 117. So Botton's up to fourth place. Uh, sixth place is Evans. Seventh place is Pink. Eighth is Heil. And then we've got Sylvan and Dortoli tied for ninth on 150. So we're gonna just change batteries. The screen will go blank for a second, but uh, don't worry, we're still here with you. And uh, we've got the third race coming up in about 10 minutes.
We're back live with the final race of the Princess Sophia Trophy 2014 ISAF World Cup of Sailing in Palma for the 49er class. One race to go in the championship here. We're inside four minutes to go. Uh, for those of you tuning in late, Peter Burling and Blair Took from New Zealand have taken the lead. Uh, sorry, have secured the victory already. Uh, there's a small chance that War and Lang in second place can be passed by Dylan Fletcher and Peter and uh, Alan Sign, who are in third. And then we've got a really tight battle for fourth between uh, Botton and Della Carth. I'm joined here with friend of the class, Bill O'Hara. I'm Ben Remerker, class CEO and uh, cameraman extraordinaire, Sam Worksmeister on the, on the groove. We've uh, had a good time here waiting for the wind to come in. And uh, Bill, what are you looking forward to seeing here? Well, there's a chance that uh, War might decide to take away any small chance that Fletcher has by taking him out at the start because he has to, Fletcher got to beat him by eight points or nine points. So if, if you can make him have a bad start, that could be all over. Yeah, yeah we're we'll in. Keep an eye for that. We'll, we'll keep an eye for. We think War did that in the in that first tack of the last race, don't we? We, uh, we think it looked like he looked he was trying to slam dunk Fletcher, yeah. and Fletcher got got free. So uh, that was mid race. You're you're talking about pre race. Um, certainly, as early as he can, if he can slow him up, then it's impossible really to catch up from way back. Cause he has to be first or second to have any chance of passing him overall. Right now, no, there's no sign of any sort of mat tracing activity happening. Uh, although, uh, although as I say that, we've got Delacarth lined up right beside Botton, and I can see them, they're both reversing uh, together. Botton is now bailed out, he's doing a circle. Let's see if Delacarth does any move. Yeah, Delacarth has now gone for attack. Let's see if he's trying to line up to starboard of Botton. Don't think he's gonna get anywhere. Uh, Botton is the, Yellow flag, uh, Spain 900, Delacarth, Austria, red and white stripes. And we just see, uh, Botton's actually lined up again, one just one minute to go, thank you. So uh, that's the battle I'm looking in, at, and I don't see anything particularly uh, decisive there. Keeping an eye out also for Fletcher and Warrer. And uh, again, those two haven't engaged either. So. 49er sailors are uh, just out trying to have a good race in their usual way. We see them all doing their last few double tacks. The breeze is up to uh, a healthy 10 knots here, and uh, there's still quite a bit of swell. So uh, lots of maneuverability and, uh, for these guys, but the only thing they're having to deal with that's uh, a little bit of a challenge is the swell. You can see uh, the pitching going on. So. Uh, it, you know what the, really affects the uh, start for the swell is if you get your timing wrong because you're off balance or you're in a phase of a wave where it takes you longer to accelerate. So we'll see which teams are able to uh, get that right. We see uh, Burling just bears off there. Start. And that's the start. Uh, Fletcher's had a really good start at the boat end. So has uh, Sylvan. That's been individual recall. Individual recall. Botton has gone back. So. Uh, the no, the, there's still an individual recall flag flying. Botten anything? went back. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the Botten went back, but we don't right? know. Oh, so now the oh, the yeah. Austrians have gone back. They're going back now. So uh, Botten was very decisive in his decision in, uh, when he decided to go back. This is the battle for fourth and fifth we're talking about. Uh, Delacarth, he's decided to go back, but very late. And he's had to put up his spinnaker. You can see he's just dropping it now. And let's see if the uh, flag so dows. And it is. Yeah. So he had to go back. But it's going to be very difficult for him to recover from such a big deficit. Yeah. Um, panning back up to the front of the race course here. Uh, we've got all the boats approaching the port boundary here, led by Dylan Fletcher and Alan Sign, GBR4. They go for their tack. Let's see if there's any issue crossing. I don't think they could. Duck, could they tack? They got tack back then. They went they for it. The they crossed the first one. They did get clean, I think, on uh, that's their teammate, Dave Evans, GBR 98. And now they're coming up to Denmark. And now they're, they're coming up to war. Clear to Denmark. Good start there from uh, Dylan Fletcher. We saw him come off the boat with a, a at full pace. And uh, now that he's, if he makes this first cross on war, we'll probably see him extend. We saw that in the first race. He was very fast coming through the fleet to extend. So for him to get clear air this early in the race uh, bodes well for them. In the 
foreground now we see New Zealand One, our race victors going for their tack and uh, simultaneous tacks there from Heil. Both of them have lanes across. We'll see what happens with Wars. Got a bit of separation now on yeah. Fletcher. Uh, I think now it's, it's interesting because Wars obviously on the favoured side. Um, so interesting when they come back, whether he can make enough ground up to cross. We think he was probably two or three boat lengths behind Fletcher, don't we? Uh, yeah, Fletcher's gone for his tack so now. It, it looks, War looks pretty good. I think War is going to cross here. Okay, so War's on port, Fletcher's on starboard. The two are coming together right now. And uh, War would have to do, or Fletcher would have to do something quite dramatic here because uh, he needs a nine or ten point uh, delta between him and. Oh, he is crossing. Okay, so yeah, so he's through. And I'm guessing he's ley line as well. Yeah. And uh, War's War second. second. Yeah. And the two of them will uh, pad their lead on uh, fourth, I think, right now. Just uh, not that we'll look show you, but I do see Delacarth and Rush are uh, fighting uh, the good, good two, a good hundred meters behind the last place boat. Botten has already sailed himself. Botten is uh, up into sixth or seventh, so that's amazing. As we see the guys go around the windward mark, Fletcher in first, Warren second, Sylvan in third. Uh, that'll be Heil in fourth, Pink in fifth, Burling in s whatever number we're at next, and then uh, then Botten. So Botten went back at the start, and he's still and he's managed to get back all the way up into contention with this pack. Yeah. So uh, well well sailed from him. And two of the first four jibes set, uh, so it's then they'll go come across the ley line as normal. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we haven't seen that much jibe setting no, here. No, it's the first time I've seen it. And the leaders, you know, sometimes the guys at the back do it. It's a Speaking of the leaders, pan forward and you can see War going for a pass on Fletcher. War is rolling Fletcher as we uh, speak right now. We can't tell exactly how much of a gap there is, but uh, yeah, Fletcher's just falling back right now. We saw this happen in the first downwind of the last race where Fletcher was in a good position and lost it. So uh, he's got it, getting a tactic slightly wrong in these first downwinds. Yeah. He's he's able to hold though. He's going low, and when they jibe back, my guess is that Fletcher will jibe simultaneous to War. Stay on that front group. They're both going for their jibes now. Let's see who can get the better jibe in. War will have got to choose the timing based on the swell, and let's see who's. Yeah, there we go. Fletcher's accelerating first. He's on a swell, and he surges down over top of War. Let's see if War can keep his lane. Sylvan's got very close. Eh? Yeah, Sylvan's right up there for the lead, and uh, and all. Yeah, there we go. Fletcher's just lost his wind. And War still somehow has kept his breeze. So Fletcher having a bit of a... Oh. Depends if they're on the line for the gate or not. It does depend. Oh, so S Sylvan's now gone for the jibe. If he's inside the zone... He's outside the zone. He's outside the zone, okay. So, uh, oh, but he still managed to cross Fletcher. And War's on the inside. So War might have gone from three to one here if he's now on ley line. But everyone's caught up. That's Dave Evans in the light blue spinnaker charging up behind. Uh, Sylvan coming to the close side. War going to the far side. Fletcher coming to the close side. Heil going to the far side in fourth. In fifth is Evans coming towards us. And now we see Botten coming in late, uh, changing his mind at the last minute to go to the far side. And uh, Dill Dillacarth has caught up nicely as well, so he's closed the distance. Nothing like sailing clean to uh, help <laughs> you close some distance. <laughs> it had to be a clear air, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, he's so uh, dillacarth has got a pass button to claim a uh, fourth spot overall in this regatta. Yeah. So now we see Sylvan coming to the close side, and uh, Warrer has gone to the far side. That's the battle for first right now. To, I mean, to be honest, uh, with War in the position he's in, Fletcher may as well pretty much forget about trying to pull off a miracle here, but it uh, yeah. doesn't mean he won't try and do his best in this race. Yeah, you never know what will happen. That's right. Fall in or break gear. War's looking really good there to me on the far side. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, he's sealing really well. He's going to have starboard as, they, as the two uh, race leaders come together here after splitting up the lured gate. Yeah, it's sweet, uh, Swedes are going fast too, though. Yeah. For those of you interested, the uh, helium balloon there is uh, an overhead shot that Icarus uses to uh, film the races. So that's, uh, that's what's dangling up in the air there. We see the cross coming together. The Fletcher and uh, 
Sylvan are even. Bit of a dip there from Sylvan, so he uh, had to duck to get behind Flet uh, sorry, Warrer. Uh, so Warrer's got the lead, and he's also going to the favored side. One last split. Oh, he doesn't go far, so he's uh, keeping in control of Sylvan, taking no risks. He'll try and win this race. I, I don't think he, he talked to the same way as Fletcher. Oh, to stay even with Fletcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah he might as well. There's, there's no point in being a hero. That's true, yeah. So uh, War looking to lock down the second place that uh, he's been in since day three of this regatta. You know, War uh, War's teamed up here with Peter Lang. So Peter was the bronze medalist in 2012, sailing with Alan Norgard. And uh, War is the gold medalist from 2008. And the two of them teamed up uh, immediately after London was over. And uh, typically, you know, you see a team win a medal and you might think them uh, they'd stick together. But uh, the Danish squad, uh, they're really close knit, and uh, I guess they decided that would be better for them to make a switch. And uh, War sailed really well since then with Lang, and they, they've been very consistent. But they were disappointed at the Europeans last year not to do better. That was their home soil, and they were they were mid pack. They were hoping to make a surge for a medal, like their country women, Ida Nielsen and Olsen. And they but they've managed to hold on to that uh, lead going up this beat. Fletcher, meanwhile, has got passed by Heil. So uh, Heil's going to come in third to this mark, followed by Fletcher and Evans. Then Dortoli, Burling, and Pink. And now Botten is only one place ahead of the Austrians. The Austrians are, what do you call that, six boat lengths behind Botten with this last run to go? Yeah, something like that. They need a pass to, uh, to keep their position on the leaderboard. In the, in the race for the lead, Sylvan got the jump on uh, Warrer, so Warrer's had to make an extra jibe. Uh, they did simultaneous jibes, and uh, Sylvan got the better of Warrer. So Warrer jibed back to the close side, so he's done already two jibes this uh, downwind, where Sylvan looks like he's off to the races in the lead. Yeah, he looks really fast at the moment. He does look fast. Uh, War is at the what we think is the favorite side of the course, though, so might have a little more breeze, but he's... Uh, Got a long way to go now to catch up on those, having done those extra two jibes. Fletcher, something is up with him downwind. He's just getting rolled by his teammates. Sorry to talk at, at odds with what you're filming, Sam, but Fletcher's just got passed by his teammate, Dave Evans, and I think Dortoli might be through as well. He's very, he's typically very fast downwind, so. Yeah, well, uh, he's looking quite good now. Okay, sorry, back to the front. War and uh, Sylvan are gonna come together here. Just keeping an eye on the back of the field as well, I can tell you that uh, Nico is putting a charge onto Botten, but right now there's still a good six or seven boat lengths in it. Okay, so final race of the uh, regatta here. War is on port though. He's uh, He's got to avoid, yeah, so, yeah, oh, and he's ducking. he's ducking. He's ducking, so he didn't have enough to get by, but maybe he's on a better angle to the finish line. No, that's the Swedes through in first, claiming a victory here. Sylvan in first, War in second, Heil in third. Then it looks like it's going to be Evans in fourth. Who's in, who's in third? Uh, in third is Heil, Germany. Yeah, Evan, uh, Evans is fourth. And then we've got uh, Fletcher. Wasn't quite as bad as we thought. Uh, he's through in fifth. Uh, bronze medal secured for him. And then uh, at the back of the fleet, you know. Where's Sylvan? Where's Hyle? I don't want to Looks like, uh, looks like maybe Dortoli, then Took, and then Pink. I don't think any of them are in a tight battle right now. Got one, uh, one pair of teams on the race course left, and that's Botten and the, uh, you know, it's very close, but I don't think, I, I don't think, uh, Look at this, the Austrians ever so close to passing, but I think Botten got it. We'll call that Botten in ninth, Delacarth in tenth. So Botten up into fourth place, Delacarth down into fifth. Very, uh, very good attempt at a comeback there. Burling and Pink, do you have any idea? Who, who, who Burling was ahead of Pink, uh, so. Yeah. Okay, mathematicians uh, crunching the numbers, but we think we've got confirmation of the leaderboard. Burling followed by War, followed by Fletcher. That'll be the podium finish in the 2014 edition of the Palma Regatta.
This is the one of the first times we've done a live broadcast uh, with just the single camera. We'll try and bring more of this, more of our events to you on 49er.org. So be sure to subscribe to our channel, youtube.com slash 49er sailing official with official spelt wrong because I can't fix it. Also be sure to uh, keep, keep in touch with us on Facebook and at Twitter at INT49ER, at INT49ER. Uh, for Ben Remaker, just like to thank uh, Bill O'Hara, who's come up with the numbers here. Conf well, unofficial scoring has Burling on 69, Warrer on 94, Fletcher on 105, Botten on 125. Oh, you've got Evans on 126. So, yeah, looks All like right. Evans yeah, had a very right. good day today, and he might have bounced Delacarth into a sixth on 127. Uh, eighth then is uh, Heil on 148. No, yeah, and then Sylvan on 151 and Dortoli on 156. Yeah, did you get mentioned Pink there? I think we might have missed him in the week. Oh, there. missed Pink on 138. That's it. So uh, obviously, check online for the proper results. And uh, thanks for tuning in today. We out.